On today's show, Klay Thompson debuts for the Dallas Mavericks in preseason. What do we see from him? What are we expecting from Klay Thompson in the future? We'll talk about all that and more on today's Locked on Mavs. I'm Luka Doncic, ah. and this is Locked on Mavericks podcast. If you don't believe, you shouldn't be here. You are Locked on Mavs. Great, Rusty. Your daily Dallas Mavericks podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Amazing. Your team every day. Still can't even help Uh, uh, and welcome. You are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Engstead, media member and NBA channel manager of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for being part of the show. We'll make it Locked On Mavs your first listen today with the best way you can help us grow the show. Listen every day on any podcast platform. Leave a five-star review. Like the video on YouTube and comment anything below. You can start the season with a big return on FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. And joining me, as always, my co-host, media member, and the... The uh, runaway Aaron, the one more thinking, what you got for me, Isaac Harris? He left runaway me. Aaron. He left me. I didn't leave you. Uh, he was here. <laughs> he was up there, up there in the arena, and then oh, he was gone. I think I, yeah, I was up there. Yeah, good, <laughs> good pointing there. No, it was fun to be back in the arena. Uh, feels weird talking to some of the arena workers. Uh, it's like, I feel like we just saw each other <laughs> a little bit ago in the finals. Uh, big difference. Between a preseason game and an NBA Finals game, shocker. <laughs> you think so? You think so? But well, the biggest thing tonight, intensity. Though, it was so cool just seeing Clay Thompson suit up in a Mavs jersey. Mm. It's going to be a lot of fun when Luca's out there. We'll talk about Kyrie. He returned as well. We got to see him. We'll talk about Omax. Omax did some things and a lot of things late. I'm I'm interested to hear Isaac's take on all the play that Omax got. Also, Jaden Hardy. Kind of, he's getting, he's getting, a, he's getting a chance. Get uh, we'll chance. talk about the Mavs defense, maybe in not a, not such a good way. But let's start here, Isaac Harris. Clay Thompson gets his Mavs preseason debut, and wouldn't you know it, he comes out and he misses his first three shots, and you go, yeah, yeah. okay, all right, here we go, here we go with Clay Thompson, and then he hits three of five threes. You gotta love that. Gets three assists. We'll talk about those, but. Clay Thompson, I think he's adding what the Mavericks hoped that he would add, and you can you can see it, right? Like you can see what he's going to add to this team: the extra movement, the extra spacing, the extra three-point shooter that Luca's going to be able to hit for these crazy passes, and a little bit of a playmaking. Like we kind of saw a little bit of, of everything from Clay here, and some aggressive defense where he was fouling. A little rusty, a little rusty there, but saw a lot from Clay Thompson. I thought. Uh, did a little mailbag today for our Locked On Mavs insiders, and one of the questions on there was about what to expect from Clay Thompson in his first game. And you know, I just said on there, I was like, "Hey, have fun with it. Play, you know, be confident. Have fun. Um, I, I want to see him just embrace, you know, a new new arena, new crowd, new fans, and uh, just take a bunch of shots, hit some shots, play it safe, and be healthy." <laughs> It was like, and you know, what? I feel like we got a lot of that tonight. Um, the True. fans, uh, you know, gave him some love in the starting lineup, and he walks out of it healthy. Uh, it took him a little bit, yeah. I mean, it, he's played his whole career with in freaking Golden State with wild. Steph Curry and all these guys, and uh, just a whole new, you know, ball game for him. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I was excited to see him out there. He, of course, he missed some shots. He, you know, he finally got a, got a three to go. Um, I think an underrated part that he's going to bring is some of his screen setting as, yes. as this, you know, shooter and space ultimate spacer and you know, being able to set some, you know, screens, some slip screens and stuff like that. It's just going to, it adds this more to this offense and we still haven't, you know, there's a whole nother element to him playing with Luca. That's just going to be another, like, he's kind of like, Oh, we have clays like the ultimate cherry on top. Completely, it'll be completely different with with you know with with Luca. Obviously, you add a talent like that, you add an offensive engine like that. He's one of the two, three offensive engines in the NBA that can actually run a team and take them to the to a top ten, no matter what, almost. And with Clay, you mentioned the screen setting. We saw that early, eight seventeen in the first quarter, the play where uh, Clay sets a screen for Kyrie. Both the Jazz players go to Kyrie and double Kyrie off of that. You, you can imagine that happening with Luca a, a bunch of times. Clay then you know pops out to the three point line. Kyrie gets in the ball and then I think it was Larry Market and steps off of or, or either Walker Kessler steps off of Lively, and Clay Thompson steps forward. Nice little short roll pass to to Lively. Lively gets in there for for a dunk layup, and you gotta love some of that. Like just that extra playmaking, the extra awareness, the extra movement movement with the ball, and. 
that's going to help the Mavs a lot because I don't have the drop with me, but you still can't leave them open. Like you, like you, you no. cannot just let Clay take that open three. So guys are going to have defenders are going to have to come up and, and attack him and come out and close out on him at that spot. And yeah, I, you love seeing. Hey. It. I love the synergy with Lively already. I mean, it was, I think all three of his assists went to him. Yeah, he had that. You know, he had that great pass to him. It was kind of left-handed. He was just like he saw it, and then he was like trying to just push it as fast as he could with his left hand. <laughs> he had this three he missed in the second. I think it was the second half. No, because he didn't play in the second half. Um, in the second quarter, that'd be wild if he missed the three in the second. Half. <laughs> um, can't miss a three if you don't take one. <laughs> but he had this uh, Carmelo. He, he had this quick three, and it was just like it's insane quick release in the second yeah. quarter, and it just rimmed in and out, and it's like. All right, that's just scary how fast you can shoot the ball. And, and it, you know, this is my first time getting to watch him warm up, uh, do his kind of routine uh, for the Mavs. And it feels like he doesn't miss in warm ups. All right. <laughs> when he's going through his whole Wild. routine, it's like, I don't, I'm watching all of his form. I'm watching his leg, like how his feet and stuff are, and just the muscle memory for just an amazing shooter that's just excellent as his, at his craft. I don't know. I could just, Everything except wearing his headband over his ears <laughs> is amazing. That's the thing you're out on. <laughs> I, I don't see how he does that. That would drive me insane. Well, if the if the alternative is he wears the headband and that it pushes his ears out, right? And then he's looking like the BFG over there. Like You don't no, want no, that. No. I don't care if you look like you're from Rivendell. <laughs> Just it, it would look less weird than the let me uh, let me strap these things in here. <laughs> uh, how do you think things will be different with, with Luca now that we've we've kind of seen Clay on on the court? Well, I, I think at times you know you, him and Kyrie on the floor together tonight, it felt like they're both. It's like, hey, we we both got to just get our shots up. You know, you kind of got to yeah. like force it a little bit. So, I mean, it's their first game since uh, forever. So there's rust for sure. Yeah, you know, this it's part of it. So didn't play the second half. So it's like, hey, let's get our shots up. Let's run this thing for Clay. Let's run it for Kyrie. Let's. And now he's going to go to being like the third or fourth option. And it's like Luca doing his thing. They're still going to run sets and stuff and get him coming off screens and all that. But just imagine Luca going to the paint and it already felt like he was open a little bit tonight. There's just going to be so many times that he's just going to be wide open. And that's the part where it's like, how, how is that fair? <laughs> <laughs> because Derek Lively just looks, I mean, he, he he's a future star. So it's just like, lively luca pick and roll we've said this before with clay and Kyrie on the wing like what i don't know what you're doing put you out there as the fifth guy and we're, we're still good not with these knees <laughs> not, not, not with these <laughs> yeah it, it's you know first couple of shots he took he missed they all looked good and they, I mean, his shot always looks good you mentioned the muscle memory in uh in warm-ups when he gets a bunch of open shots like i that's going to be so demoralizing to defenses. They turn around and, okay, you're trying to recover. You're trying to, okay, Luca just threw a pass, and now i got to figure out, all right, I was supposed to switch. Where am I supposed to switch to? I turn around, and it's Clay Thompson wide open. There's no way you can close out fast enough on him. This is not you know, a wing that's not a great three-point shooter anymore. That The release takes so long that you can run out there. This is Clay Thompson. Like it, it is, It's kind of incredible to, to see it on display and to see him in a Mavs jersey. People are still kind of like – in, like, it makes no sense to them. It breaks their brain to see Clay in a Dallas Mavericks 31 jersey, which, by the way, Tim McMahon reported that we heard from Jason Jet Terry that uh, he's happy that Clay is wearing 31, and he's happy that he's also wearing a headband, and he's like, go get some buckets for me, basically. Jet is a uh, is assistant for the Jazz, and so I thought that was cool that he kind of uh, you know, gave his stamp of approval on Clay there. And the irony that you know this is the first player that's um, worn 31 since Jet. And right. And you know it's Clay's debut, and it's against the Jazz, and Jet's here, and I'm sitting there watching Jet do you know warm ups and stuff with John Collins and different people, and <laughs> not, not him himself. <laughs> what? Yeah, you, know, you said Jet. Watch Jet do warm ups. I just imagine him like it's splashing a bunch of threes, doing the airplane thing. <laughs> like, I mean, Jet, you're not, Jet, you're not playing, man. Like, <laughs> starters are gonna play the whole game in this one, apparently. <laughs> uh, is he better than Tim right now? Hey, so it, it was just kind of just seeing, <laughs> you know, seeing Jet and stuff. It's, it's a cool reminder of the 2011 team, but that's that's Clay's number now. It was awesome to see. It was awesome to see Clay Thompson. I'm excited to see Luca. It seems like we may only get to see Luca the last preseason game. That's what what Jason Kidd said, and so we'll see if that 
Uh, if we see him in the second to last game, I don't know. It sounds like we're not going to, but I'm excited to see that last one and excited to get the season going, man. Let's let's get into it. So, but coming up, let's talk about the other guys that stood out to us. Kyrie returned. Omax did some things. Let's talk about Omax and what he what we saw from him. Coming up. I don't believe he shouldn't be here. Today's episode of Locked On Mavericks is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use that code Locked On NBA to get twenty dollars off your first purchase. Use Game Time. You can do all kinds of stuff with Game Time. I love just going on Game Time, and uh, I, was, I think I was on Locked On NBA last night, and I was, I was, there's four dollar tickets to a Mavs game, and I was like, "What? You never know what you're gonna find on Game Time." in the middle of the read on there. So go check out Game Time. Use the all-in pricing. All you have to do is hit the toggle on, on all-in pricing. You see exactly what you're going to pay at checkout right at the front, and so you got to love that. They've got Dallas Stars tickets now. They've got uh, Cowboys tickets. They've got uh, concerts. They've got what's – what's a good concert coming up here? Uh, none of them. So <laughs> you can go check out the concerts. Maybe you <laughs> like some – go check out Go check out Game Time. See what is available. It's, da- it's on Dallas, not on Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account. Use that code LOCKDOWNNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account. Redeem that code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-B-A for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. That's correct. Shut it down. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us on Lockdown Maps, being part of the show, part of the Raccoon Squad, listening every day. Appreciate each and every one of you for checking out the show. Isaac mentioned the Lockdown Maps insiders. If you want to get text from your phone on Maps game day updates, I sent injury updates. Isaac did a mailbag today. We're doing all kinds of stuff on the uh, Mavs Insider program, so go subscribe to that. All you have to do is click the link in the description, text the number, be part of it. It helps support the show. We'll do more stuff on there, and then, uh, yeah, you get text straight from us on, on Mavs stuff. Pretty awesome. Like, I really love it. And I love when people come up to me and say that they're a Mavs insider and then they show me it on their phone. It's pretty awesome. All right, Isaac. Kyrie Irving returns. We get to see Kyrie, and uh, he's still good. I thought, Yeah, I thought he looked, <laughs> I thought he looked pretty good tonight, uh, especially, you know, the lefty. Uh, it's mm. kind of like a running joke in the playoffs a little bit. It's like, are you, are you going to shoot every shot left-handed now? <laughs> and uh, But he was breaking out the left hand tonight. If he felt comfortable. I mean, I mean, there were definitely a little bit of rust here and there. Some, you know, you know, bad turnover. A sense of ball read it pretty good. He fouled him on the, you know, fast break. But you know, he's still getting to his spots. He's still taking his, you know, getting. Uh, he missed, you know, he missed all of his threes. I think he took three or four threes and yeah. missed them all. But um, yeah, I mean, Kyrie's Kyrie, man. That's he had a finish tonight in the paint, you know, oh. going going left or right, and that I was just like, all right. It's good to be back watching Kyrie Irving play basketball again. It also made me sad for the Jazz because I don't think they can guard any guards this year. I think they're going to have a hard time guarding anybody, really. I mean, you look at Sexton, who was – Colin God, Sexton. He's taking shots here. I am. Sorry. I have a hard sorry, time Dave. guarding uh, sorry, David. anybody. Sorry, David Locke. I saw um, David Locke tonight, too. Good to see. Nice. Good. Good to see David Locke spend some time with him and – yeah, they should have a good season in the lottery. So he was, <laughs> he, David Locke was right here, right, right up, right up there. That's where David Locke was. I think he was watching Cooper flag tape. <laughs> he was going to, yeah, it's like all right, let's let's see what we got coming. But yeah, Colin Sexton had a play where he foul. He was like he was picking somebody up half court, and then he fouled at half court, and then the ref called a foul right in front of him, and he clapped at the ref. <laughs> Oh no! Here we, here yeah, we no, go. He clapped at the ref, and then he like because it was against Hardy, and I'm like, "What are you doing, bro?" And then he just like kind of butt tapped, you know, Hardy there. It was just like, I'm "Like, all right, man." So right. yeah, but we saw good stuff from Kyrie. I, well, again, it's a it's a, almost an honor to watch, to watch him play basketball sometimes because of just the things he can do. Good to see he picked it up right from the from the end there, and the three point shot will come back. I'm not. I'm not worried about yeah, that at all that's, that's with Kyrie right. or the or the turnovers or anything. You mentioned the rust. I mean, that, that's kind of what it was. See, he's getting into the paint. He was taking his sh- getting his shots off. He was using the left hand. Uh, it wasn't. Yeah, he was not rusty. It didn't feel like uh, a ton. So, I think that's you know he didn't play the second half. Um, Clay didn't play the second half. So, uh, just getting their getting their feet wet and got a couple more of these preseason games, and then we're gonna see Kyrie all the time. Somebody who did play the second half also started the game. Our guy Omax. So the start didn't go to Marshall or Grimes or uh, Dwight Powell. <laughs> it went to they were or Hardy even. It went to uh, Omax. They started three guards with with Kyrie Dinwiddie. I guess Clay is going to be considered a, a wing for them. Yeah. And then uh, Omax and Lively. Just go go for it. What did you see from Omax? What are you excited about? The start, the finish, all of it. 
well, unfortunately, uh, <laughs> this is one of those like spot start things, trying to keep the second unit together <laughs> uh, because PJ is out. Uh, so this will be PJ spot in the starting lineup. But so glad, but still glad he got it. And I thought it was uh, funny because you know you said going into the preseason, we did a, a preseason pot, or like, hey, what do we want to see? You know, this coming preseason. And you're like, hey, I want to see Omax guard a bunch of these yep. players. And you listed off players, and one of those players was Markkinen. And he starts off the game guarding Markkinen. Yep. And uh, I love what I saw from Omax tonight. It's the it's the exact type of stuff I didn't think. He handled the ball a little bit more than what I thought, especially in the second half. That fourth quarter. Yeah, but but still, you know, he hits a three in this game, uh, takes three of them. It, it, was, it was the non – ball handling part of Omax that I really liked the yeah. energy, the defense, uh, the, the keeping the ball live, uh, on the defensive glass, um, seeing him just down there banging with the big guys, uh, getting on the floor. That's the type of stuff. That's the role for him. And especially, and you see what he can bring at his size when he starts the game, he's guarding like a marketing yeah. and you see like, all right, dang, he's, he's a big dude. Like, Omax is that's why I really, really want it to work out so bad because you need that type of size on the perimeter. And uh yeah, still a little deer in the headlight ish uh, sure. with his with his energy and stuff, but I like I really liked what I saw tonight. Yeah, he starts on Larry Markinen and then he switches on, you know, Clarkson or or Sexton or Keontae George when he was in and and all that, and you go, man, he, just that versatile defender. It'd be so awesome, like you said, if that worked out, and for him to, to get there. But we saw a ton of hustle, and honestly, that's what you kind of need in that spot. Uh, I know you have the box score in front of you because you're real big on preseason box scores. Um, yeah, it's big time. How many steals and blocks do you think he got tonight? Oh, I'm gonna go with zero. Come on, he got he got he got, he got zero. Uh, but you wouldn't have you wouldn't have thought it because of how much hustle, how much how many times he was on the ground, how many times he was involved in defensive plays, and uh, he's making an how impact. Many, how many rebounds he have tonight? Huh? Because That's right, ten. Matter. Let's go, ten. Da's. Let's go. Listening off the real stat that matters. That's right, and he kind of hit a clutch shot late. Like he was he was doing some stuff, and we mentioned the ball handling in the fourth quarter. They legitimately had him and Jamarion Sharp running pick and rolls. Where Omax was the ball handler and Sharp was setting screens against the Jazz starters who were still in the game at that point. They basically played the whole game. What did Larry Markin finish with 29 minutes? Um, Wecker Kessler at 24, Sexton at 26. Like they, they played their guys for a long time in this game. And uh, I thought that was interesting. I don't know what to make of it. What do you, what do you think? Was kid just trying to give him chances and reps to try? Or I, I can't imagine they want him to handle the ball ever on this team. I mean, he needs a chance, Nick. They're trying to give him a chance. <laughs> The same um, age as Jamie. He's, he, I mean, he, for real, he does need a chance. He needs more than, for sure, you know, yeah. with, with his injury and stuff and you know, just a second year. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think at this, you're just trying to see how he's grown, how he's grown this offseason. If he had this offseason, he comes in, he's like, dude, I worked on my ball handling so much. He talked to us on media day. Yay, that's right. About how he's worked with Sham God and his, you know, and his ball handling. And, it's like if you know this is something he's been working on a lot, he worked on it this summer, then what better time than a preseason game in the fourth quarter of, a, of the second preseason <laughs> game than to say, all right, let's see how it looks on the basketball yeah. floor. So, sure, why not? It was just interesting just to see it over and over again. It wasn't, you know, they have Jay Jay-Z and Gortman out there who could run some stuff. You know, I think Hardy was still playing late in the game, so they could have done that, but might as well. It's preseason. Nobody's really cared. That, like, like the uh, the score doesn't really matter on all that, and so let's just you know run out, let's run some stuff and see what happens. And there's really no reason to not try things like that. I wish teams would try more things like that in the preseason. We saw like Quinn Grimes, for example, take like a stop and pop pull up mid range jumper, and Tim Cato and I looked at each other, and go, "Ooh, that was a bad shot. Like that was mm. just you know a rush, not a great shot." But I mean, if he's gonna take it, you might as well take it in the preseason and try some of that stuff in transition, and you know try a shot in game speed that you may. Not it may not work out for you this season, but keep adding stuff to your game. I mean, you never know. We're probably about to take a break, but coming up after this break, <laughs> we'll talk about somebody uh, who treated this game uh, not like a preseason game. <laughs> we'll talk about that guy coming up. We don't believe you shouldn't be here. Today's episode of Locked On Mavs brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel Sportsbook has all kinds of props and odds, things that you can use to get in on the action. And when you put down $5, your first $5, you can get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you use uh, when you use FanDuel. So go check out that, see what's available. They've got 
The Liberty versus the Lynx. I was watching that game. That one went into overtime. Lynx minus 126 favorite to win the series right now. Uh, Liberty Whoa. plus one, 108. So that one's pretty fun. There's all kinds of other stuff on game on uh, FanDuel as well. Go see what's available. Again, FanDuel, go check it out. They have NBA futures. They have NFL for this weekend. They'll have college. They'll have like the WNBA finals that we mentioned. All kinds of stuff. And then if you're a degenerate, <laughs> you can go to Mavs preseason games. They have, a, they have an NBA preseason thing oh. as well. <laughs> So go check out that, FanDuel.com. See what's available to you. Shut it down! Oh, Let's go home! All right, Isaac. Who is the, Mavs, pl- who is the Mavs player? They really don't think the Liberty is going to come back? I guess not. There's only five games. They're, yeah. they're extending it to seven, but we'll see. Okay. okay. It was a, it was uh, a hard-fought game. Um, Danny G. Da- Daniel Gafford. Mm. I mean – this dude was playing with all the energy tonight. Yeah, he was. Throwing down dunks, getting on in the fast break. And it just goes to show you, like, the importance of having some of these bigs out here that, you know, you're seeing reports and stuff about it. I think Shams uh, said that, you know, the Lakers are, you know, scouring the market for a, a big man. <laughs> oh, uh, are they? You look at, you know, New Orleans, and it's like, wh- who is their big man? They're going to start Herb Jones, I, I, Shams reported today. It's just like, it's funny how the resurgence of that like middle tier big man is becoming a, a commodity around the league. <clears throat> and I say around that like middle tier, that like 15 million, 20 million, maybe like just in those, that, that range there that Gafford's in. And just having that one two punch of a lively and then a Gafford. And see all these things that Lively brings, and Lively should be the starter. He is a you know a star in this league to come. But then also have this bigger body in Gafford. And uh, I was just looking at him tonight, looking back at our interview on Media Day. And it's like, dude, this dude is <laughs> bulked up a ton. Yeah, he did. And it's, you know his early days in Chicago, and even some early days you know, there in Washington when he you know first got there. So just having both those guys, they're both great in a pick and roll. Uh, you don't have to. You don't have to mess with that. I think that's a good combo that you just you try to keep that. You try to keep that combo for a while. He also had a sequence where he got a block on one end, went to the other end, got a lob from Hardy, and Hardy tried dunked. to throw some lobs tonight that were dunked all over AJ Lawson. I don't know if Gafford oh, didn't yeah. know <laughs> that AJ Lawson was signed back on the Mavericks or not because he dunked all over. But man. He was throwing all kinds of power behind that. Absolutely insane. Uh, it was pretty funny because I said he got uh, he got. It's Tim Cato and Kevin Gray are good friends over at a different podcast. Not a different. <laughs> <laughs> isn't isn't it called the only podcast? Oh yeah, isn't it the only the only Mavericks podcast? Wasn't that isn't that what it was? Or is it seventy seven minutes? <laughs> seventy seven minutes, isn't that what, isn't that what it's called? <laughs> the gray area, isn't that what it's <laughs> You're just being mean now. <laughs> Isaac. Uh, Tim Tim and Kevin say hi to to Isaac and to everyone. Kevin did not say hi. Kevin did not say hi. Hi, hi Tim Kevin. Tim, you're messing this whole show up. All right. DLL DLLS is destroying our show right now. <laughs> I'm glad they're just now getting going on. Hey, doing a daily podcast is hard, ain't it? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, That's right. That's right. I don't forgot what we were freaking talking about. <laughs> we, were talking about Gafford and we were talking about Gafford, the power. We were talking about Gafford dunking on AJ Lawson. No, I say, I joked. I would say he just Tory Craig'd him because you remember that oh, play where Tory Craig was for the Bulls and he's like, oh, he gets yammed <laughs> on there. Uh, but no, that was great. He yammed on Walker Kessler too. Which I don't know what Walker Kessler's role is. Like, what is he in the NBA? Because um, now he's like back starting. It's like cool. 15 boards tonight. I mean, yeah, but th- he didn't like start for a while. Well, no, but the problem is who they start. They tried John Collins last year. Like, I, don't know, not, I also not don't know there. what they're trying to be. Like, what is Utah trying you don't? to do? Right? What are they? What are they trying to do? I know what they're trying to do. <laughs> Cooper flag. Raise the flag. <laughs> um. What else about this game that I was going to say? <laughs> <laughs> Jaden Hardy. I, I wanted to talk about Jaden Hardy in this segment. Hardy plays a bunch of the game. He uh, he ends with 25 minutes, 3 of 11 from the field. It's two threes. Looked real confident. 4 of 4 from the free throw line. Uh, 
<laughs> four forces, four forces. This is for him, too. I um, love that sentence. Anyway, three for 11 from the field looked real confident. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He did look. <laughs> is that not a true statement? Is that Tim Hardaway's music I hear? <laughs> uh, this is the thing with, with Jaden Hardy is like, you, you got to see some consi- There's got to be some consistency there. And he just hasn't found his like one NBA thing besides the spot up shooting the like you know helping off of a luca or a Kyrie or somebody like that um i've been saying all preseason and even in training camp that i don't think kid is gonna want him to be a primary creator at any point and that happened in this game we did see it in this game uh not for very long but we saw him out there and i thought that was it was i mean the, the first quarter it was hardy uh clay grimes Najee, and gafford at the end of that first quarter but i don't think that experiment is gonna last for very long especially when luca comes back uh yeah probably not um you know, it's just some of the decision making. I mean, that's a, that's the thing that this he's. Is, we talked to him at media day. <laughs> did we really? You we can did. find those media day interviews that's on right. YouTube. Uh, each of that's the correct. interviews. Uh, that's correct. Uh, but no, I mean, yes, he's the best uh, when he's playing off ball, doing some catch and shoot stuff, uh, getting to the paint, some of that. I do get a little scared when he's, you know, kind of like trying to do a little too much, and uh, yeah, I'm trying to figure it out. Um, yeah, but um, I thought he had some good moments at, at times. Quentin Grimes, I'm waiting for him to find his, his rhythm. Uh, you know, two or five from the field. So I'm hit three. a three. Looks looks good. Yeah, yeah. I, it's the preseason, so it's not like I'm walking out of any preseason thing super worried. I am. No. I am a little bit this. I've been thinking about Dinwiddie. Yes, this, like the second unit. And it's like I do miss. I miss the calming presence of Exum out there, kind of just like running the show and setting up people. But but I did get asked on the mailbag today for the Lockdown Mavs Insiders. That's right. That it was like, hey, DSJ, Dinwiddie, do you, do you regret, you know, do we wish we had to? And it's like, hey, I get it. I wish Dennis the best. But I do think at times Dinwiddie's going to put up 26 in a game. Yep. He's going to go off in a third quarter for 16 points. And it's, there's really not too many people on the roster outside those big three offensive weapons that can do that. So they're going to need that at times. You wish he could be better as a playmaker. He threw a lob to Lively that Lively couldn't have gotten if we gave him a lift. Like if the Mavs dance team or the Mavs, like the, the, you know, the jumpers on the trampoline, like, like all those guys that, that dunk off the trampoline. If we gave him one of those, I don't think Lively could have caught that ball. It was just so weirdly placed. He's never been good at, at throwing lobs and that, really really stinks but you don't get a guy like that on the minimum that is good that can score that can hit a three that can you know play make like that that can do and is and has some size you don't get one of those guys at the minimum so i mean this is what you're this is what you're dealing with at this point so yeah i mean he's, he's there for his scoring and i thought it was interesting that he started him did you find that that interesting because i think kid wanted to simulate the two playmakers and clay in the backcourt yeah i think that was the the only reason with that and simulate if Luca or when Luca misses some time this year, that that's probably what's going to happen, right? Like Dinwiddie, like it wouldn't shock me at all. Here, here's the thing: I'm viewing Dinwiddie as a regular season guy. It yeah. wouldn't shock me at all if we get to the playoffs and Dinwiddie's barely playing because they opt for a Dante Exum, and that well, when yeah. everybody's healthy, the, the rotation shrinks. Kyrie and Luca's, you know, alternating minutes, kind of whenever they, one sets down. And but it's like regular season. Luca misses time. Dinwiddie starts in place. Kyrie misses time. He starts in place of Kyrie, and it's, he's that third guy. Yeah, he's almost like a mid, an innings eater, like what Montrez Harrell used to be. You know, like how Montrez Harrell used to come off the bench with the Clippers. Yeah. You get to the playoffs and you go, I don't know what your role is, but you can do some damage in the regular season for sure. I hope Exum could become that guy in the playoffs because he sure wasn't this past year, and they really could have used somebody like him. And you kind of hope Hardy steps up in that role. Now we're like, all right, what about Dinwiddie? And they're like, okay, Exum's out. I mean, they just keep running through guys and haven't found that exact guy yet. So hopefully one of those three guys, you know, Exum comes back, Dinwiddie and uh, Hardy, one of them steps up in a big way because that would be huge for this rotation. Absolutely. Huge. Be huge. Farewell, Nicholas. Goodbye, Tim Cato. They just did their daily show. What kind of daily show is that? (laughs) Five minutes. Tell them to step up their game. Come on. They they in their contracts they only do an hour long show or they do a two minute show. <laughs> That's how long Cato can last. <laughs> <laughs> Get 
say you can't say that. You can't. You can't. No, I was saying like no, you a, can't say that in a podcast. Like <laughs> there you go. No, that's our. That's our. No, that. that's our cue to end. No, we're, we're, we're done. I think they're gonna put this on TV someday, guys. Thanks so much for hanging out with us <laughs> on Locked On Maz. Appreciate you and every one of you for checking out the show. And uh, yeah, we'll be back on Sunday night with some more for the Mavericks, guys. Thanks so much for listening to Locked On Mavs. Peace out. Boom. Can't say that.